Okay, so this is a typical static equilibrium question where you have to account for all the forces keeping, um, keeping the thing in the static equilibrium and uh, you have to write down equation. So let me do this question as an illustration of that uh, static equilibrium problem solving. It's not really new from the Newton's law problem solving strategy that you have already been doing <laughs> way back <laughs> about a month or two months ago. The one thing that changes maybe is uh, with the static equilibrium questions, there tend to be a lot of forces. So uh, learning to account all of them and not include any extra forces is the, uh, the thing that a lot of people need to practice for. So let me write down the static equilibrium condition as a reminder. This is the static equilibrium condition. When something is in static equilibrium, we say that net force is equal to zero. And the thing, the new thing that we are introducing with the rigid body motion is now saying the net torque is also equal to zero. So that there's nothing that's tending to cause acceleration or angular acceleration. So um, in this question, it says a uh, uniform horizontal strut weighs, okay, um, I'm being given some weight. Um, one end of the strut is attached to a hinged support there on the wall, and the other end of the strut is attached to a sign. Oh, yeah. So sign there with um, W2. The strut is also supported by a cable. Oh, yeah, there. Um, so... Uh, since uh, I'm noticing that it's saying supported by a cable, let me just uh, label tension force um, between the end of the strut and the wall, assuming that the entire weight of the sign is attached at the very end of the strut. Oh, um, I, so it's not a uniform sign. <laughs> it's a sign attached at the, in the end. Um, it might be a good engineering practice because uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, if it, all, the whole thing is built to, to withstand this, it'll withstand when the sign is uniform. So it's the worst case scenario. Um, okay, end of the strut, find the tension in the cable and the, uh, oh, force of the hinge at the strut. Okay, um, some kind of force of the hinge at the strut. Okay, let's see what the question is asking. Yeah, tension and the force at the hinge. It looks like it's asking for the magnitude of those forces. So I'll work it out that way. Now here, one thing to be careful about is I think uh, most of these forces are familiar to you and it's not um, like they shouldn't seem um, unusual. The one force that a lot of people might not have experience dealing with directly is this force at the hinge. So I will show you where in the equation they go. But let me start off with a free body diagram so that I can clearly diagram all the forces and um, and you know go through our a standard strategy. <laughs> so step number one, drawing free body diagram. Now, one thing that's changing from the free body diagrams we are drawing before rigid body motion is now we express extended bodies as the extended body. So I think I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the strut because uh, that will give me enough places to place the force to indicate uh, where the force is acting in all the ways that matters. So the strut is uniform, meaning we can uh, treat its gravitational force on the strut as acting on its center, geometric center, where the center of mass should be for a uniform strut. So that's weight one. And uh, so even though sign is separate, I'm going to uh, treat this force here as though it's uh, acting directly on the strut. Uh, so, you know, the way it works is the gravitational force pulls on the sign. There's a tension-like force between sign and the strut, and the, 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 the strut is pulling up on the sign. Sign is pulling down on the strut. There's all Newton's third law thing. So simplify all that and just to label the force W2 at the end. That's what the problem is specifying. Uh, we need a tension force that's at this angle. I'm just going to use the... Uh, reference theta to indicate the angle that tension force acts at. 
and and then force at the hinge so this is the role of the hinge force so when you look at these three forces weight and the tension vertically you might be fine vertically the tension can produce all the upward force necessary to counter the the weight but the problem is well there are two problems one ob obvious problem is that the tension has is producing a horizontal force so we need something that's uh, counteracting that horizontal force so that's the one reason you need a hinge force now if that's all you need you might draw the hinge force horizontally but what you will find as you do these static equilibrium problems is that oftentimes the amount of tension force you need to make the net force uh, vertically uh, uh, net force vertically equal to zero is not necessarily the same amount you need to make the torque net equal to zero. So, so I'm used to drawing a hinge force in some arbitrary direction. It could actually be pointing downward this way. I won't know until I actually solve it. For now, I'll just, okay, I, I think when I got kicked off the meeting, I was in the middle of saying that uh, I did a step number one, <laughs> draw, free, draw a free body diagram, and now step number two, I have to define coordinate axis, and here um, my acceleration is a zero, so I have a total freedom in how I choose my coordinate axis, so I'm just going to choose a same axis, well, well, regular straight axis, because uh, there's no reason to make it tilted. Um, now, one care about the origin, now that we are dealing with the torque as well, we want to put some thought into where we are going to put the origin. And I would like to put the origin here. Um, this uh, putting the origin here, it helps separate us some parts of the problem solving. I guess it, it, for this particular question, it's not that important just because um, we, I, we are looking for hinge force eventually. So it's not really saving us a lot of work to define my origin here because I will eventually solve for hinge force and and the kind of extra work I might be trying to avoid it by choosing the origin here. Well, I'm not really avoiding it. Now, if I were just uh, looking for the tension force, uh, putting the origin here would uh, help me do it in such a way that I don't have to worry about the hinge force because basically I can just set up network equals to zero and solve that for tension. And without worrying about the net force portion, I would just assume that uh, hinge force will make it work out. So, um, so that's my step number two. Step number three, break down forces into components. Now with the hinge force, I have to tell you that I don't know what this angle will be. So I'm just gonna leave it be but I am going to label the X and Y component that uh, matches my assumptions about the hinge force. And uh, tension force, I can be more detailed. So this is T cosine theta, and this is T uh, sine theta, yeah, based on the right triangle you see here. Okay, that's step number three. And finally, step number four, write down Newton's second law equations. And this time I should remember to write down the torque as well. So let me write down those three equations, net force in the X, Y, and torque. So I have net force in the X direction. Um, so that would be the hinge force, Fx, minus the tension force, T cosine theta, is equal to zero net force in the y direction um, it would be i still have a hinge force f y and then the tension x upward plus t sine theta minus uh, the weight uh, at acting at two different parts of the strut is equal to zero and i want you to take a notice of how um, given this hinge force here these the rest of the forces can basically be anything it, so the, the hinge force is there to enforce the net force is equal to zero it's the the kind of the, um, uh, that it balances the equation that's its sole role for the hinge force um, so let me write down the one that actually has information about tension and all that uh, net tension and 
net attention network and let me do this in a bit of an unusual way I, in a way where i can do it so that um this also serves as uh, as a practice uh, in drawing uh, lever arm so the lever arm for weight one and weight two are simple it's uh, the perpendicular distance from the center of rotation so this is the lever arm for w1 and the lever arm for w2 would be this so those two are simple i think uh, people don't have issue with that um oh they don't tell us how long the whole thing is let me just give it a label um so the length of the strut is l and i'm hoping it'll cancel out <laughs> so so both of these weights they are tending to rotate the thing clockwise let me associate a positive sign with a clockwise torque so i will say all right um, l over 2 lever arm for w1 times w1 plus l times w2 and now we have a torque due to uh, tension to worry about and um, here the easier thing to do is actually to use the y component the perpendicular component of the force but um, since that's already drawn so you know you can easily write down minus uh, l t sine theta you can easily do that so let me do the do it a little bit harder way uh, to give a chance for practice uh, drawing a lever arm so you uh, identify a line of action by extending the force that you see into a line. That means it's extending out in all directions without ending. And the uh, purpose of this line of action is so that you can draw a perpendicular distance from the center of rotation to that line. So I think this is the perpendicular ish distance from the center of rotation to that line. So this is my lever arm for the tension force. And once you have drawn it, then you have to figure out the geometry. Here the geometry I would look at as well. This is a right triangle. And I have a label for the hypotenuse of that uh, triangle. I have this angle here. And the lever arm is the opposite side of that angle that's labeled. So I would write down the and and this uh, um, so looking at the the lever arm and the direction of force this is tending to make things rotate uh, counterclockwise so i gave positive sign to clockwise so this should be minus um l wait not l uh, the lever arm so it would be l sine theta that's the length of this lever arm here times the force and net torque adds up to zero and it's the uh, same expression that you would have written down if you use the perpendicular component of the force, like normal person would. <laughs> I'm doing it the long way. So, so we have uh, three equations. One, two, three. And uh, let's make sure we have uh, only three unknowns. Uh, we don't know the x component of a hinge force. We don't know the y component of a hinge force. We don't know tension, we know angle, we know weight. And oh, here it is. So even though we don't know the length, looking at this equation, see, the right-hand side is equal to zero, which means any common term we can cancel out. And uh, L is common in all three terms, so we can cancel out L. So we didn't need to know the length of the, the strut, just uh, uh, where in the relative terms forces are attached. So we got three equations and three unknowns. So we should be able to solve for it. And let's just do that. Um, I would recommend a level of organization as you solve through here. The thing that I would do is I would look at these three equations and see if any of those three equations involve on only one of the unknowns. That's an equation that we can solve for that unknown. And from there on, we can treat that unknown as a known quantity. And as you stare at the equations for a bit, you do have one here. This equation here, it's in terms of only t, is the sole unknown here. So I can take the equation number three, solve that for t. So I move this over. So I have w1 over l, sorry, not l, over two, uh, plus w2 is equal to t sine theta, 
solve for tension. So tension is equal to um, one over sine theta times W1 over two plus W2. And I guess that makes sense. If uh, theta is very small, then tension has to be very large to provide enough uh, counter torque. Okay, so you know, now, so I can plug in the numbers to get numerical value for this. So for the rest of my solution steps, I'm going to treat tension as a known quantity. I'll just use numerical value because um, I can see that the expression for hinge force is going to get complicated. So I want to make it as simple as possible. So uh, with the hinge force, this is what I have to do. So um, I, in both of these, I think it's going to be just so much easier to just uh, um, simply solve for each component individually because I don't, I'm not given the angle. So solving for angle, it seems like it's a longer way than it has to be. And this hinge force in terms of its component is the square root of the x component squared plus y component squared, the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to solve for the x and y component separately and then go through this formula to get the magnitude of a hinge force. They didn't ask for the angle, so I'm not going to solve for the angle. Okay, so the x component of a hinge force is, oh, it's quite simple, t cosine theta. I can plug in numbers here for everyone here. So I'll get a numerical value for f of x. And solving for y component of a hinge force, the y component is um, uh, moving everything over, <laughs> it'll be W1 plus W2 minus T sine theta. And I can plug in numbers to everything here. So I'll just do that. Um, so yeah, let me plug in the numbers, um, I guess. Let me use, um, uh, let me use a sage math. I want to, um, this, so normally I would do this on calculator, but um, tired of using calculator one and two um, there's a benefit to um, um, computer algebra system like sage math which is that uh, so uh, let me declare some of my variables here uh, I mean I don't I well let me declare because it'll make things easier. <laughs> Vars, uh, I think that's right, W1 and W2, and oh, and theta. Okay. Is it bar? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, and this is how you, I, I'm getting more familiar with the Sage method syntax, and this is how you substitute in numbers. So I'm going to build a, a dictionary um, that's going to be. So W1 is the weight, uh, 350 newtons. W2 is the weight of the sine, 220 newtons. And theta, um, let me put that in radians. So it's a 30 degrees or in radians, it'll be um, pi over six. So that's my, um, those are the numbers I'm plugging in. And for me to plug in numbers, this is how I can do it. Um, so for T, that's, um, um, so this is the expression, one over uh, sine of theta times um, W1 divided by two plus W2, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so that whole thing gives me an expression for T. And what I can say is, um, so this whole expression for T, and there's a bound method, I think it's called a sub, and I uh, substitute in uh, these symbols for those values. So when I do that, and it doesn't, is this subs? Yeah, <laughs> so tension force is a 790. So, uh, so that's my answer for the tension force, 790, and um, and let me do this. Uh, well, I think I can update it. Uh, is there? Yeah, update. Um, so I can update it by putting in the value t is uh, uh, equal to, and 
Although I can do this another way, let me just uh, put that expression in. Uh, just, so it, it, this is for the scenario where um, maybe the number you get is not such a nice round number. And instead of having to worry about where do I uh, round it, you can just uh, uh, put that entire expression in. Then what this will do is, oh, I need to define variable t. Uh, what it'll do is uh, it'll just uh, put in the new value. It's like calculator memorizing numbers, but uh, except this does <laughs> it's limited to a single memory slot. So, um, so for uh, let me do this in one shot. Uh, well, do I want to? Uh, let me do step by step. So the x component of the force is t times uh, cosine of theta. Let me substitute my numbers again. And oh, wait, that's a little bit uh, too hard to plug in. Oh, wait, 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 okay. Oh, I, I think I know what the problem is. I need to kind of include them all. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, it, it still isn't what I want. So let me just uh, uh, get a numerical thing. Sorry, not all that familiar with the syntax. Okay, so that's the numerical value for the the x component. Uh, let me update my rule with that. Um, this is not any faster, <laughs> but I just wanted to show a different way. Um, and if I see a similar static equilibrium question, I can actually show something else with this. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so I have that. <laughs> let me calculate the y component. That's gonna be w1 plus w2 minus t sine theta and let me make sure I enclose everything and substitute the rule. Um, that's my y component. So let me update my rule with, you can see that I'm, um, the way I'm doing this, it's uh, not the most efficient way. It, I definitely could have done it in a way that's much quicker. Um, Okay, so these are my answers so far. And for my final answer for hinge force, the magnitude, I can write it this way. It's a square root of fx squared plus fy squared. And I'm going to just substitute in um, the rule. Okay, 706.19. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this step-by-step -step is so that I can see the numerical value for the Fy. So this positive answer is telling me that the hinge force is pointing upward. Uh, I guess I had a decent intuition in thinking that it would have point up. So, okay, 706.2. So let me put in the answers and just make sure I didn't make any mistakes. 790 and 706.2. Um, yeah. So, okay, that took a lot longer than it should have. Um, 